if there are many documents that you know you're trying to write currently that's what i'm facing in my role now uh, we have about 150 processes and about more than 150 170 documents uh, and i'm the only technical writer so for me to be on efficient and to try to like you know um, uh, do a quality check for all of these documents and ensure that all the steps are accurate it is already a task and mm -hmm. on top of it, for me to be, uh, if I could just use single sourcing where, you know, if the login steps are already documented in one place and I could just reuse it. And I know that these steps are perfectly written and, you know, the quality is at par with everything else, then I can just reuse it, right? Like, and that just makes my uh, cut, it also ensures consistency and makes my life so much more easier. Welcome to the Knowledge Based Ninjas podcast. Where Gowri Ram Kumar of Document 360 finds the best SaaS self service knowledge bases in the world and then interviews their creators. Let's get started with today's episode. Good day, everyone. Our guest today is Pooja Lakshmeshwar, technical writer, BAI Communications. Welcome, Pooja, to the Knowledge Base Ninjas podcast. How are you doing today? Thank you, Gauri. Uh, I'm doing really well. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking, Pooja. So before we ask any further, I would like to understand how did you get into this profession? Uh, you did mention to me that you've been a technical writer for many years. So what was your first inspiration to choose this career, please? Uh, it's a very interesting question because um, I, I did my bachelor's in computer applications and uh, that was when I got interested in coding and, you know, uh, all uh, programming languages and things like that. So I wanted to pursue a career uh, related to that. Uh, but I was also very keen on uh, becoming a journalist or, you know, be, do something with writing uh, because I always had a flair for writing. And uh, I start, I did my master's in media studies. And that's when there was a course for technical writing as a part of the um, uh, master's degree. And uh, that was the first time I heard about technical writing. And that's what, that was when I was like, this is it. This is what I want to do. And uh, even though there were many options for me to pursue after my master's degree, because I did media studies, I was like, I'm going to be a technical writer. Mm -hmm. So I started applying for technical writing jobs. And uh, luckily, I got campus placed. Uh, and that's how I started my technical writing journey and uh, uh, it was I think what I understood initially then to what I uh, have seen so far in my journey of more than a decade uh, I think uh, it's been really interesting and uh, I didn't know that there were so many options as a technical writer but yeah it's been really good so far right so how many years have you been in this uh, space uh, about 11 years now <laughs> Great, great, super. Yeah. So I'm sure you must have worked with all kinds of projects, uh, company size, etc. So uh, when working in large technical writing projects, mm -hmm. now how would you approach breaking down your project into clear manageable topics which would help you to document further? Yeah, I think uh, what I've understood, uh, I mean, this came as a learning after many, you know, trial and error methods of uh, writing. I think topic based writing is something uh, that, you know, so I learned as a concept in one of my, uh, I think my second company. And then that's where I was like, this is it. This is a very good approach because uh, it breaks down the entire uh, project that you want to, or whatever your topic is that you want to convey to the audience into smaller bits that are easy to digest and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and very uh, you know it makes it so precise and also concise so i think uh, uh, topic based writing has just been something that i've learned from there and continue to use uh, even today as a technical writer and uh, i feel that uh, having um, topic based documentation is one of the uh, most efficient ways of writing uh, uh, you know that you can use because uh, it makes your uh, documents consistent and you know easy to read and mm -hmm. uh, readability is what we always you know uh, try to ensure so Absolutely. i think uh, uh, topic based writing is something that has been something uh, i've you know really uh, try to ensure that i carry on wherever i go yeah <laughs> so it's many years of uh, experience mm -hmm. and then you decide okay which ones could be in one topic and uh, yes. Great, great. Breaking down any content into smaller bits that are like easy to understand is what um, I feel uh, just makes documentation so much more easy. 
Great. How does this work with SMEs and developers? How do you approach them? How do you educate them that this is what has worked for me and it's going to work in this particular project? So mm -hmm. help me understand how does this fit with your overall workflow with other stakeholders? Yeah, I, that's a very good question because uh, not all stakeholders are on board because it just means that they have to review a lot many more, uh, yeah. you know, snippets of information. So, yes, that is a challenge sometimes. But when they see the value of how having a small uh, snippet of information uh, uh, can be useful versus having long lengthy documents mm -hmm. um you know when they can actually see there have uh, i was also uh, a part of a company where we did reports uh, based on uh, lengthy documents versus having topic based uh, content and that's when we could actually show quantitative uh, data and be like look at this uh, this the lengthy documents don't really have uh, many people looking at it because they would have to scroll, uh, you know, towards like I don't know how long to find whatever information they needed to find. Mm -hmm. uh, but with topic-based writing, it's much easier. You just have to like you, because you can also have related links and things like that. It's easier to just click and go to wh wherever you want to go, and uh, it just makes uh, reading much more easy. And mm -hmm. that when I sh when we have shown them this is the you know data that we have, they're like, oh yeah, I, we can totally get on board with it and. Uh, Usually it's, and also it, you know, for them as well, because they are also like, uh, you know, how technical writing works is uh, we are there testing uh, guinea pigs and they are our testing guinea pigs. So uh, they get to just read and they're like, oh, this is easier for us to review as well once they get into it, because it's just a small piece of document uh, versus a lengthy document. So yeah, that's how I've got them to be on board. <laughs> we always say, right, numbers speaks a lot. So if you just yeah. show the analytics and the supporting data, Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about uh, single source authoring um, mm -hmm. part. Now, uh, yes. how do you think that single source authoring goes beyond just reusing the content? Uh, and how does it help with uh, project efficiencies and also on the content quality? Mm -hmm. Uh, so I worked uh, for Amazon, which is an e-commerce company like all of us know. But so the thing with Amazon is it has so many marketplaces. So the content that we would create uh, would have to be used for all the various marketplaces and in different languages. So, uh, you know, that that was when I found single sourcing to be the most useful and most efficient because translation became so much easier mm -hmm. with this uh, because we could just conditionalize uh, the paragraphs and, you know, tables or in, wherever we were trying to add content and just get that particular part translated versus getting the whole uh, you know, topic or even the whole uh, section translated. Uh, so that would save money. That And I think uh, cost is something al that also uh, plays a huge part in any project. And I think uh, when, once people saw the benefit in doing that, I think, uh, you know, it, that was the way to go. And single sourcing has, I think, uh, so many advantages like you know consistency and cost benefits and all of this. So I am a huge advocate for single sourcing. Great. So as a continuation of that question, because one of the main reasons to use uh, single sourcing is to maintain the consistency, as you rightly said, you make change in one place and then it gets reflected in multiple places where mm -hmm. it is referred to. And um, now I, when I was uh, looking at your LinkedIn profile, um, mm. It says that you deliver documentation in various formats, like mm. um, user manuals, process documents, etc. Now, what is that biggest challenge you face in making sure that the consistency of information is the same across these different formats? Uh, I think um, the biggest challenge usually is, you know, when the volume is high. Because if there are many documents that, you know, you're trying to write, currently that's what I'm facing in my role now. Uh, we have about 150 processes and about more than 150, 170 documents. Uh, and I'm the only technical writer. So for me to be on efficient and to try to like, you know, um, uh, do a quality check for all of these documents and ensure that all the steps are accurate, it is already a task. 
and mm-hmm. on top of it for me to be uh, if i could just use single sourcing where you know if the login steps are already documented in one place and i could just reuse it and i know that these steps are perfectly written and you know the quality is at par with everything else then i can just reuse it right like and that just makes my uh, it also ensures consistency and makes my life so much more easier with all the 170 documents yeah. so uh, that's that's definitely the biggest challenge i think quantity of documents and deadlines and deadlines are the second thing that also uh, mm-hmm. are a big challenge as technical writers because you have to keep up with your engineering team your business team or you know whoever you're uh, working with so or the testers uh, and so your deadlines are based uh, on their way of working most of the times and uh, i think single sourcing helps uh, you know just reuse content in places uh, wherever you can to save your energy and time as well so yeah very well said um, i think um, the documentation team now becomes part of the overall project right it's not always it's not the last step anymore it's absolutely one of the steps for a successful yes. product launch here Great. Now, how do you envision the future of single source authoring? Oh, that's a good question, and I've not really thought a lot about it. But because I'm currently happy with the way it already uh, enhances uh, technical writing, uh, because I've also used uh, you know just regular Word and uh, you know uh, in my current job as well, I just use MS Word, and I can I, I struggle because there's so many documents to maintain and so much to uh, uh, write and keep up. Uh, with up to date with uh, every day so i think single sourcing the way it is also is a great way of uh, uh, ensuring that you know consistency and all of that is met so mm-hmm. i would love to uh, just you know try to implement that in my current role uh, first uh, but i think that's what i'm uh, trying to do um, actually great so all the best very best for that uh, <laughs> Now with Thank that, you. let's move on to the rapid fire questions. Um, sure. I'm sure you must be spending a lot of time reading um, various blogs or other forms of resources. Now, anything that uh, attracted you and you would like to share today with our audience? Uh, actually, I've been fortunate uh, that I've worked with a lot of technical writers. So for me, my knowledge mostly comes from different technical writers uh, who have had a lot of experience across the globe. And uh, currently, I'm in Australia, so I'm trying to learn their way of working and how things are done in Australia. So that's like mostly for me, interaction uh, is what uh, works the best. As in, I learn from talking to people and things like that. But having said that, write the doc. Uh, uh, is just the one of the most uh, popular, and uh, you know I use it. I, I get I've subscribed to the newsletter, so I go through uh, the newsletter on a regular basis to understand what uh, the re- current trends are, and you know also just understand how things are going. Yeah, so that's what keeps me um, updated. Great. Now my next question is, um, what is that one word that comes to your mind when I say documentation? one of my first managers taught me this uh, whenever you write a document uh, it has to be concise uh, so for me it is uh, cons- keeping the document concise and crisp mm-hmm. uh, so i try to strive when you know remove like i think that's why single sourcing also works uh, the best for me because um, uh, i try to keep the document crisp and mm-hmm. concise yeah so i would think of document when that that's the first word that comes to my mind crisp concise <laughs> yeah Great. Now, my last question to you is: um, Now, what is that one piece of information or advice you would give to your twenty-year-old self? Oh, I would just say, trust the process yeah. in every sense, uh, because um, uh, just first of all, write down the steps and processes, and go back and get all the feedback necessary and all of that. But also trust that um, you know the everything that happens uh, in documentation is. Uh, align with the bigger picture so that was something that i was not able to see in the initial years of my career and now i think i get a better understanding of that that's nice that's nice so <laughs> have i missed anything to ask you today pooja no uh, not really i think we've covered most of it okay now uh, i know you you said you have the busy period of the year with a lot of things mm-hmm. happening at your end I really mm-hmm. appreciate this time you've taken for us and sharing some of your unique experiences. Eleven uh, plus years into technical writing is not a small, um, a small uh, thing to, um, to 
it's it's a it's a very big uh, achievement is what i would uh, say to jai so thank thanks once again and all the very best for for the contents that you're going to be creating thank you so much for giving me this opportunity gauri it was really nice talking to you great thank you have a good day pooja you too bye bye thanks for listening to today's episode of the knowledge based ninjas podcast please head to itunes rate and provide honest feedback on the podcast see you next week <laughs>